President Joseph Fielding Smith explained some of the predicted judgments in his talk on March 27, 1967. I think we are all familiar with the parable of the wheat and the tares, which is found in the 13th chapter of Matthew. The disciples did not understand this parable, so afterwards they came to the Savior and asked him for an explanation. And here is the explanation. He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of that wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of the world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and which do iniquity. Now, in reading this, I put a little stress on two parts of it. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. We have a little more light upon this parable revealed in section 86 of the Doctrine and Covenants. I think I will quote the last two verses. But behold, in the last days, even now while the Lord is beginning to bring forth his word, and the blade is springing up and is yet tender, Behold, verily I say unto you, the angels are crying unto the Lord day and night, who are ready and waiting to be sent forth to cut down the field. Now, in the parable, we have it in the book of Matthew. We do not have the distinction drawn between the sowing of the seed in this dispensation of the meridian of time, and again, the sowing the seed in the dispensation of the fullness of time. But here the Lord makes this clear. If we had the parable just as he gave it, I am sure that this distinction would be in it. The sowing of the seed occurred twice. Once by our Lord and his apostles at the time of his ministry, the wicked one sowed the tares, and drove the church into the wilderness. That has reference to the apostasy. Then again, in this our day, when the gospel is again restored, this same thing is repeated. The good seed is sown, or sowed. The wicked one comes along and sows the tares. And the angels are now waiting, pleading with the Lord to reap down the earth. Again, in the 88th section of the Doctrine and Covenants, the Lord says, speaking of our day, For all flesh is corrupted before me, and the powers of darkness prevail upon the earth among the children of men in the presence of all the hosts of heaven, which causeth silence to reign, and all eternity is pained, and the angels are waiting the great command to reap down the earth, to gather the tares that they may be burned, and behold, the enemy is combined. And according to the revelation of President Woodruff, the Lord sent these angels out, on the mission. That is, when they first asked if they should go, the Lord said no. But President Wilfred Woodruff made the statement that these angels had now been sent on their mission. What do we gather out of that? That we are at the time of the end? This is the time of the harvest. This is the time spoken of, which is called the end of the world. And I am glad of it. I want to see the world come to an end. Now, do not get frightened when I say this. 
I am praying for it every day. And when I said that several years ago, that I was praying for the end of the world, and, and if it came tomorrow, I would be glad. I said that in the Salt Lake Tabernacle. The woman sitting in the front seat, bottom row, spoke right up out loud so they could hear her all over the building. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> now, if I am wicked, I will not be glad. But if I keep the commandments of the Lord, I will be glad even when the end of the earth comes. Because we will get a new earth and a better earth. And it is not very far off. The Lord will give us a new heaven and a new earth, a cleansed earth, a restored earth, the one we sing about and preach about. As stated in the 10th article of faith, the earth renewed to receive the paradisal of glory, cleansed from wickedness. You have been reading in your papers of the terrible distresses, plagues, and famine that have been taking hold of some sections of the world. These countries that have been robbed of practically everything they possess. Now, let us turn to some modern prophecy. I would like to quote a statement from President Brigham Young. When the testimony of the elders ceases to be given and the Lord says to them, come home, I will now preach my own sermons to the nations of the earth. All you now know can scarcely be called a preface to the sermon that will be preached with fire and sword, tempest, earthquake, hail, fire, thunder, and the lightning and fearful destruction. You may think that the little you hear of now is grievous, yet the faithful of God's people will see days that will cause them to close their eyes because of the sorrow that will come upon the wicked nations. The hearts of the faithful will be filled with pain and anguish for them. The nations are full of iniquity. In the quest for wealth and power, rulers perforce must deny the validity of a doctrine that would invalidate them if their followers ever accepted it. In any case, and whatever the cause, in critical and important places, these nations no longer believe that they are accountable to this judge for their acts. This, I believe, is the root of their ills. And who can believe that we can escape the penalty for such an act? Rejection of the gospel, rejection of Jesus Christ, and when you reject the gospel, when you reject the author of our salvation, what do you have to rely on? Nothing but the devil's plan. We hear a great deal about the thoughts that were fighting for liberty, the liberty of the people, the liberty of the nations. I hope so. But if we want to ensure the liberty of people, then we must turn back again to Jesus Christ, who is the God of this land. I say we. I mean the people of the United States, the people of this continent. We cannot afford to forsake the God of this land who is Jesus Christ. If we do, we lose our strength. The Lord has promised to protect the nations, this whole continent, this whole hemisphere. We would fortify it against all other nations. He would. He would fight our battles on one condition, and that is that we would keep his commandments. Now here is our danger. We must not forsake God. If we are not in this life abiding in his truth, 
you may be sure he is not going to be on our side. He will leave us to ourselves. Now these calamities are here. They are upon us. The whole world is in commotion. I have told you now what the Lord said was the, was the prophets of our own day have said. I have shown you the, the, the fulfillment of the predictions by President Wilfred Woodruff that the angels are sent forth to reap the harvest. They are on their mission. I hope and pray that I have given you something that will be of value to you in keeping the commandments of the Lord. And may he bless you with the, that desire to serve him in righteousness is my prayer to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer.